All right. I wasn't going to do it, but you know what? Deadline. It's an important enough trade deadline for us. We got to go for it. We got to see what happens with this team and what kind of a spot we can get us into moving forward. You know, now that we talked about Oscar Steen, though, a few minutes ago, I'm tempted. Let's see what happens here over the next few days in terms of these contract negotiations. Patrice Bergeron, if he doesn't retire, will be back. Jake DeBrusque signs for about, what, two and uh, three quarters? Kolasar's back. Not bad. That gives us a look at what we have. So Steen, 13 million. Steen has been a pretty solid second liner. He wants four years. It, it makes sense. Four years at four mil. If he accepts that, we're golden. That's a hell of a deal for him if he accepts that. And nobody else we have to worry about right now. Again, we can lock in those deals later, although in fairness, we probably will. Swayman, Swayman, we got to wait it out. We have to wait it out for Swayman. These other dudes, though, maybe we do keep them around. Maybe we do just take care of some early business. Let's see what happens, though, at the deadline. We beat Pittsburgh. Oscar Steen does take 4x4. Four four. So we go to the deadline looking to make a splash, but knowing that we don't absolutely have to. Ryan Ellis is available. Drew Doughty. <laughs> Colton Pareko. Damon Severson. Oh, baby. This is, this is the defenseman's deadline. This is the defenseman's deadline. Okay. So let's see. I mean, Zellweger, Hellison, obviously not what we're looking for. If we're looking to go all in. Uh, LaSalle, I mean, he should be on the Vancouver Giants. He might be on Providence, but he should be around. Detroit's made the first deal of the day. Trading Marash Nachenko in a second of the Blues for Damon Severson. So not only uh, are defensemen the theme of the day, but they are going for a high cost, it would appear. Again, Colorado's getting rid of some pretty good prospects, but we're not after prospects right now. We're not tearing down. We're looking to build further up. So L.A. with Doughty, I follow. Makayev, Kopitar. Let's see. Carolina's made a deal. Reese, Tixola, Debian for Roy and Yanmark. So the Blues are cashing in early. The Kings of the Wild are interesting ones. I mean, Mike Hoffman's there. Matt Zuccarello, second liner. One year left. Interesting. Interesting. We got another trade here. Olison in the second to San Jose for Balsers, Magna, and Shimmick. Defensemen are getting fucking paid. Bergeron's down to a third line center. I don't have room on the second line. I don't have room for uh, for Zook. I don't. Damn. Okay. That was worth checking. So right now, it's still the Kings as the most interesting team. Not that I want $11 million of Drew Doughty. Tried to hunt Will Butcher to Calgary for not much. Um, you know, Mikhaev or I have followed to replace DeBrusque could happen. Doughty is way too fucking expensive. IFL just does not put up points. Pure defense, and he's getting shredded. So I don't know if we'd want to do that, especially when Jake DeBrusque, I mean, costs about as much as Mikhaev and is pretty much as effective. And IFL just got traded to San Jose straight up for a second. God damn. Hoffman I'm obviously not really interested in. Tanner Janot is out for the year. This, again, might be another year. I thought that was Tyler Sagan for a second. This might be another year where just the right piece isn't out there for us to add Ryan Ellis. Right D. Fuck. Oh, if he was a lefty, 
I'd be all over it if he was a left defenseman. Uh, but I'm not willing to get rid of Carlo, who's having a pretty good season. Penguins trade Mark Friedman. Uh, Freddie Goodrow making 3-7 as a third liner. Can only play center. Mm. They really might not be that right fit for us. Ristolainen's the missing piece, right? Jordan Eberle, second liner. We don't really have room there. Jaden Schwartz has barely played. Do you trust Jaden Schwartz to replace Jake DeBrusque? Barkley Goodrow just got traded for Joel Edmondson. Wenberg, the missing piece, Max Domi, baby. <laughs> I got Andrew Kopp. Let me get Max Domi in here, too. He's on a horrible Seattle team. I don't know if I'd trust him to outproduce Jake DeBrusque. St. Louis, Tampa. I'm not seeing that. That obvious missing piece for us. There's nobody to like flip Riley or Grizzlick for. It's better to just keep them around and let them walk at the end of the year. I don't care if they walk if we win the cup, you know? It's just, it's not there. The only real option I'd have is trading DeBrusque for Ilya Mikhaev. That's it. Like, that's it. Dallas makes a deal with Columbus. Not a major move at all. There's just nothing there. Second year in a row, there's just not really much there. Again, if Zuccarello was a third liner, I'd go for it, but he's not. He would have been a perfect replacement for uh, DeBrusque, but it doesn't work. You could argue Mike Hoffman, 15 goals. Like, all he has is the 1T, obviously, power play specialist. But I'd rather trust Jake DeBrusque, even though Hoffman's on an expiring deal. Tanner Janot wouldn't fit anyway, even if he could be signed this year. We got nothing. We got absolutely nothing. If Kolasar was playing badly, you know, Noel Achari is ripping up the AHL, but... We do have depth. Ryan Ellis doesn't really fit. Unless we were to flip Carlo, which I'm not willing to do. Risto <laughs> is in the AHL. Four years left of 5.1. Holy God. I was thinking of picking him up for the meme. Never mind. I mean, like, Jeff Carter... Jeff Carter... And have Kolasar move to a depth role. Bring Danton Heinen back to Boston. Seattle traded Jaden Schwartz to New Jersey. Jeff Carter might be my best option, realistically. I think we're now looking at the Jeff Carters of the world. The Alex Barabanoffs. Or Kevin LeBanks. Finally bring Kevin LeBank to Boston. Woo! He's tearing up the AHL. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful time. Again, like Domi. Domi for DeBrusque. Like, it just doesn't... It just doesn't work. I don't really want to take out Colasar, though. He's been doing pretty well. Like, Carter, in theory, is an improvement. We lose a lot of physicality. I'm just mad. Like, there's nothing. There's no trade out there that makes sense for us. For pretty much the second year in a row... As it is for Ellis, they'd want Steen LaSalle in a first. Yeah, it's not going to happen. That's absolutely not going to happen. I mean, I'd then have to flip Carlo. just, And then Dowdy, Cop and LaSalle. That's not going to happen. Absolutely not. Colton Pareko. He's off the market now. So available players, Freddie Anderson, we don't need a goalie, Zook, Eberle, Janot. I mean, we could pick up Tanner Janot's signing rights heading into next season. It's DeBrusque in two-thirds, though. Is he going to be that much better than... Actually, he can't even play the third line like DeBrusque does. Like, Trent Frederick in two-thirds for Tanner Janot is a hell of a deal. But then I just have to flip somebody else. We got nothing. We got nothing. 
I thought this I thought this was gonna be this was gonna be it for us. I was wrong. I was wrong. I thought we had a real chance here to maybe wheel and deal and flip a little bit. To an extent that made sense. But, you know, again, like all we could really do is flip Carlo and then still try to bring in Ryan Ellis. But Carlo really hasn't been that bad. He really hasn't. And I don't really like the returns that are out there. So, let's sim to the end of the year. I'm kind of wanting to hold on just to see if anybody pops up on the, the block now. It's not looking like that's going to happen. A lot of the trades that are going through aren't major trades either. I don't know. Maybe we hold on for a, a couple minutes here just to see if anything pops up. But I am not holding my breath. Not at all. I just think we're screwed. I think we're screwed. That's it. We'll see what trades happen, but we are done. Without being able to even make a move, we are done. Our deadline uh, pickups are guys who are already on the team and leaving at the end of the year. That is our situation. In terms of the trades, Trevor Moore, Sean Walker, Devin Shore to Tampa for a prospect. McKay have got dealt to Nashville for a guy named Bob Ma. And then that Susie trade, Tanev to Detroit, Jaden Schwartz to New Jersey, and we saw the rest. That was, uh, you can't even call that deadline mid. That deadline sucked. Nothing really happened. When Damon Severson getting dealt is the top move at a deadline, you know it's been a pretty boring day. You know it's been a pretty boring day. Give Allmark two in a row here. Wins them both, so if Swayman loses to Philly, I'll probably give Allmark another chance. Both goalies have really turned it around, though. Come on, Sway, get the win. Nice. Uh, this is actually going to be two more games for Allmark because we have a back-to-back -back coming up. So we'll give him the two heading into it. New Jersey again. We beat him three to nothing. And Dallas. Kevin Maki gets hurt in the AHL. Not a bad split for Olmark. Swayman's back. I thought that was going to be an injury. He loses. Posternock 60 watch. He's on pace. He's got, what, 15 games left? 53 goals? It's possible. Back-to-back -back losses. Damn. Damn, damn, damn. You know what, let's, let's, what we should do really quickly is go best lines just to see if it updates the power play at all. Just to see if it updates the power play at all. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Or the PK, based off of player development, you know. We lose to Columbus. We just keep losing games here. Bad time to hit a slump. We lose to Detroit. Boys, you do not have a secured playoff spot here. It's, it's time to figure it out. Florida. We at least get a pity point. Pasta is definitely not going to hit 60. He has been stuck on 53 for a long time. And now he goes to 55. If David Posternock is on his game and scores, we do very well. End of story. Radulov, MCL sprain. We beat Chicago April 1st. Eight games to go. We're on 90 points. Pasta needs four goals to hit 60. It should very well be possible. We are battling, still technically, for the division title. Likely battling for that second seed in home ice in round one. Probably keep everything the same. Let's get Bussy some more games here in the AHL for Providence. Alright, let's see what happens here. It is 
Montreal. Montreal for Swayman. We lose. Pasta still on 56. Allmark. You get two games in a row here, buddy. Buffalo. We lose. Pasta up to 57. Demirs gets hurt again. Winnipeg. We win. Still haven't clinched a playoff spot. We have a better points percentage than Tampa. So we get a decent little chance here. Ottawa, we need a win here. And then we have three games in a row to end the season. Still haven't clinched a playoff spot. The Islanders, we win and have clinched a playoff spot. Pasta, two goals in three games. Can you get it? We play Philadelphia and lose. Pasta still on 58, and I think we have pissed away a chance at home ice advantage in round one. We pretty much have. We've given it to Tampa. Allmark against the Islanders. We win. Pasta hits 100 points, but is still on 58 goals as we head into the final game of the season against Carolina on home ice. Will Pasta hit 50? First period. Hall, Frederick Bergeron. Two goals for McKinnon. We get a goal. It's Marchand. And we lose 6-4. to four. Nathan McKinnon just scored five goals. We lose our final game of the regular season. Uh, we are likely on the road against Tampa. Indeed. We're going to be on the road against Tampa. So not only did we not clinch the two seed... But David Pasternak, all of his momentum dies, and he finishes with only 58 goals. But 45, 30, and 7, it certainly could have been a better record. We know we're playing the Lightning in round one. Detroit will be taking on Carolina. New Jersey will play Columbus. And the New York Rangers will play the Washington Capitals, Bunny, that last song was called Arlandria by the Foo Fighters. I don't even know what this next song is, but I'm going to listen to it. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Let's see. In the Pacific, Calgary plays Vegas. 91 points for Anaheim. Anaheim will play, what was that, Edmonton at the top? Nashville, Minnesota, Chicago, Arizona. It was Edmonton at the top. Did we finish inside the top 10? Nobody did not. We finished 11th. One of three teams with 97 points. Around the league. Actually, let's look at our points first. So Pasta, phenomenal season. Marshawn, great season. Bergeron, really solid season at his age. Hall, pretty good. Not amazing. Steen. Pretty good, not amazing. I gotta be honest, I kinda wish I waited. Kinda wish I waited to hand him that new contract. I'm a little bit nervous now. I'm a little bit nervous. Andrew Kopp only had 42 points. Also a bit nervous. Smith, pretty good. Coyle, pretty good. DeBrusque, pretty good. Kuntar was great. Kolasar was okay. Frederick, eh. Do you ever play clubs on this? No, not anymore. Game's trash. Defense. McAvoy, not bad. Riley, not bad. Grizzly, not bad. Our defense is pretty good. Berglund fit in pretty well in his first season. He certainly wasn't horrible. Then goaltending-wise, a 9-19 for Swayman and a 9-16 for Allmark. So certainly Jeremy Swayman is our starter heading into the season. Postseason, that is. In terms of the league, good God, Connor McDavid. Kaprizov, Kucherov, Sabanishad, Goodrow, Pasternak, Dreisaitl. The men to hit 100 points. McKinnon hit 60 goals. Ovi is up to 866. Goal scoring king was Kucherov with 68. 60 for McKinnon. Pasta, Forsberg, Kaprizov, and Zabanajad all hit at least 50. 
craziness. Defensively, yeah, I mean, again, Fox, Carlson, Bouchard, Yossi, Pesci, all great seasons. Bound to happen. Hamilton was the only guy to hit 30, though. He's the only guy to hit 30. No surprise, Shesterkin, the winningest goaltender. 11 shutouts for Blackwood on the league's best Devils. And the Vesna's likely going to Blackwood. Scoring on medium shots high is what we were on. Can't seem to find a perfect balance. Thomas Bordalo may have come out of nowhere to win the Calder. My my best guess is Savoy because he's the only plus-minus option of this group. 35 goals, though, for Dante Delmas as a rookie. 31 for Connor Bedard. Uh, that is a very competitive Calder race. Hopefully I didn't just call it the Vesna, but a very competitive Calder race. It's a hell of a season. We are playoff bound again. We fell in the Stanley Cup final last year to the Vegas Golden Knights, and this year our journey starts again against the Tampa Bay Lightning. In terms of the bracket, this is what we got. Minnesota and Nashville, Arizona, and Chicago, Calgary, and Vegas, Edmonton, and Anaheim. In the East, Rangers, Caps, Devils, Jackets, Lightning, Bruins, Red Wings, and Hurricanes. Will we win the Cup this year? I hope so, because it could be Patrice Bergeron's last run. And I'd be a sad, sad man if he doesn't win a second Cup in Boston. A sad man indeed.